right now on News Channel 8 at 6. An airline losing track of its own passenger? Why a mishap on a Southwest flight to Tampa is raising security concerns. A major step toward turning Cuba into a tourist destination where you might be able to catch a cruise to Cuba in the near future. And a discovery that will make your skin crawl. Scorpions in a Tampa apartment building. Residents turning to aid on your side for some help. Good evening, I'm Keith Kate. And I'm Stacy Scheibel. Thank you for joining us. We do begin with the weather tonight. Some strong storms on the radar as we speak. Chief Meteorologist Steve Jervy joins us now from the Forecast Center. Yeah, Stacy, nothing severe. Just want to give you a heads up where the rain's located on this summer afternoon. A few thunderstorms have kind of developed farther west of where the stronger thunderstorms were developing earlier in that line that seemed to go over 100 miles earlier. Let's look at the radar right now, as a matter of fact. Showers continue to develop around sections of uh, oh, Hillsborough and Pasco County. Kind of rained itself out now in parts of... Uh, uh, Polk County down into Hardy County. That's weaker. They won't see as many lightning strikes. But we are seeing a few lightning strikes just north of downtown, kind of reaching out toward the airport, Drew Park, Egypt Lake, Sulphur Springs, and also the outflows developing farther west into Pinellas County. But these are not really that strong, just east of Safety Harbor at the moment, south of Rocky Creek and around Shore Acres. Just some dark clouds, no doubt. These uh, areas uh, north, you can see up into Pasco County, south of Shady Hills, north of Landa Lakes, and then farther south, too, off of Inglewood, Southern sections of Sarasota County, some thunderstorms are moving offshore. Inland, good news is things are quiet. It was very active about an hour ago, well, actually about two hours ago or so. Uh, that's quieted significantly. Maybe a few strikes, but probably not many left in Polk County, uh, south of Lakeland, west of Lake Wales, and east of Bartow. Just some moderate rain. So that's the good news, guys. Nothing severe at the moment. We'll keep an eye on for you, see if these showers continue to develop around Pinellas County. Coming up. All right, thank you, Steve. Remember, you can check the radar in between newscasts anytime by logging on to WFLA.com. You could also check your smartphone with the Storm Team 8 Weather Max app. And now to a major development for tourism in Cuba. Carnival plans to begin offering cruises to the communist nation. The cruise line hopes to set sail out of Miami next year. And it is possible in the not too distant future that people right here in the Bay Area will be able to board a cruise ship headed to Cuba. News Channel 8's Josh Thomas joining us from the Port of Tampa with a story. While the initial cruise into Cuba would leave from Miami, it is possible that in the not too distant future, people here in the Bay Area will be able to board a cruise ship headed to Cuba. Carnival ships could soon be setting sail for Cuba after the U.S. government gave its approval for the cruise line to start service to the island nation. That's good news to Diana Cancio, who runs a travel agency out of Tampa. Um, something new for me, better for my business, so I'm so happy for that. Initially, the cruises will be culturally exchange-based, meaning you won't technically be going as a tourist. Cancio, who was originally from Cuba, thinks that's a good way for U.S. citizens to start learning about Cuba, its people, and its culture. Yes, it's very important, because some, uh, now the people have... Uh, different idea about Cuba. The news about Carnival's new cruise to Cuba spread quickly at La Teresita restaurant. Frank Sipersad told me he would take advantage of Carnival's new destination. I think it's about time that something happened. You know, and I think it's good for Cuba and probably good for the United States. John Mangan's son just returned to the U.S. from Cuba this past weekend. He welcomes more openness between the two countries. Now, personally, I still have my own reservations, but from my my son himself just came back, and I, I think it's probably, for the long run, a better thing to expand than to constrict. The Cuban government still needs to give its full approval, but if it does, those cruises could begin as early as next May. In Tampa, Josh Thomas, News Channel 8. Now to an eight on your side story that is raising concerns about airline security. A Florida couple bought their grandson a ticket on Southwest to come visit them. But when it was time for him to fly back home, the airline had no record that he was ever on that departing flight from Chicago. Eight on your side's Lauren Make has been digging into this. She joins us now live from Tampa International. And this is a head scratcher, Lauren. It is. Good evening, Stacy. Yeah, when you check in and you board a plane, you probably think the airline knows you're there and probably knows who you're sitting next to, but that is not always the case. I found out this has happened before, and it can be pretty shocking. The Florida vacation was a chance for a family reunion. 
But the trip hit a snag. There was email from Southwest stating that uh, says your the ticket, the uh, going and return was canceled due to a no-show. I was like, kept reading it two, three times. I said, this doesn't make sense. It didn't make sense because they just picked up their grandson James from the airport. Dennis Parent called Southwest Airlines. We has to be because we picked him up in Tampa. He's sitting in our family room. But they tell me the airline didn't have any record he'd boarded. So you knew that he had gotten on the plane in Chicago? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He took picture of showing he was leaving Midway. Uh, they were asking, do you have any proof that he was in Chicago? Did he buy a newspaper, a bottle of water? Do you have a parking ticket? I reached 20-year-old James Kavinsky in Chicago. He tells me he used his phone to check in. They apparently didn't know you were on the plane. How does that make you feel? I mean, kind of scared. Security is what worries them. There's a terrorist or a plane crash. There's no record of me. When they counted on the plane, who did they count? I contacted aviation security expert Jeff Price and found... It, it probably happens more often than, uh, than most people might expect. It's even happened to me before. He tells me it's a consumer issue first. If you're going to put me through all of this inconvenience, you need to fix those problems. A problem that interrupted this family reunion. Because it's going to happen to us, it's going to happen to you, it can happen right. to anybody. Now, I contacted Southwest Airlines to find out how they track things and what might have gone wrong in the check-in process this time. They tell me they are looking into this, but they haven't gotten back to me on that yet. Stacy. All right, I am interested to hear what about that return trip home? How did the grandson get back? Yeah, that was canceled, so they actually had to buy a new ticket for him. Now, after talking to Southwest Airlines, they do tell me that Southwest will be refunding that money, but the whole thing was really just pretty unnerving for them, Stacey. It really is a strange story. All right, Lauren Make, live at Tampa International. Thank you. We are on top of some breaking news out of St. Petersburg tonight where someone has shot a 14-year-old boy. Police are interviewing witnesses right now on 12th Avenue South. They believe this was a drive-by shooting. The bullet hit the teenager in the foot, but he is expected to be okay. Police say a 14-year-old boy stole his mother's van and was involved in a hit and run that sent a 3-year-old to the hospital. The little boy was riding his bicycle with his mom in St. Petersburg when the teenage driver hit him and took off. Police later caught up with that young man and arrested him. As for the 3-year-old, he had minor injuries. A Pinellas County judge has ruled against three prominent Tampa lawyers saying that they deliberately set up that DUI arrest of a rival attorney. The ruling found Stephen Diaco, Robert Adams, and Adam Philthought guilty of numerous ethics charges. The judge will hold another hearing in which he will recommend a punishment. The lawyers could end up being disbarred. Florida State University in damage control mode after I'm sure you've heard one of its football players was caught on video punching a woman in the face at a bar. Yeah, this didn't take long. Uh, FSU acting quickly. They have dismissed DeAndre Johnson from the team. Our sports anchor Dan Lucas joining us now with the latest on the investigation and the result of all of this. Uh, it, Last night was yeah, the breaking news. It was a story that really is more than a week old. You read the police report and you make your own opinions. Mm -hmm. Then you see the then video. Then you see the video right. and it speaks for itself. And this young man made a huge mistake. The now former FSU quarterback DeAndre Johnson is preparing to face that battery charge after, of course, the surveillance video surfaced Monday showing what happened in that Tallahassee bar on June 25th. Johnson clearly seen punching the woman in the face after the two had an altercation at the bar. Uh, the FSU football program quite frankly did the right thing in his decision to dismiss Johnson. Now Johnson's attorney, Jose Baez, says it was the woman who was the initial aggressor and perhaps she should be the one facing a charge. State attorney Willie Meggs disagrees. After going through the video frame by frame, Meggs undoubtedly considers her the sole victim and added there will be no charges filed against her. Uh, Baez pointed out uh, that Johnson is learned from this incident. He's actually volunteering at a, a battered women's shelter in the Tallahassee area. But uh, this is a 19-year-old man, a freshman football player, very talented player, wondering if his career is now ruined. Uh, so a split-second misjudgment uh, costing this young man to... Mm. Uh, no excuse to hit a woman mm. ever Correct. for any reason. Correct. All right. Thank you, Dan Thank Lucas. Thank you, Dan. Well, Polk County is ready to sacrifice millions of dollars in tax revenue to bring in big jobs. Coming up next, we're going to show you why they are giving Walmart this big tax break and why they believe it's going to be worth it.